Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Power. This is your host, Jeffrey Pinzon, and I'm super excited about today's episode. We have a special guest all the way from Palmdale in the sunny California. And a little bit about this gentleman, his name is Jose Savalsa, and he owns a successful brokerage company out in the city of Palmdale, and he also has a successful coaching business where he coaches realtors and entrepreneurs on how to get their business to a whole nother level. So I'm super excited that we're going to get a chance to talk to him, get to know him a little bit better, and see his perspective of life. So I'm always excited about bringing people on board that are going to give value to this channel. And hopefully you guys get a lot of value from this from this gentleman that we're about to listen to. Make sure that if you guys, this is your first time watching us, make sure that you guys turn on the notifications, subscribe, and share this with other people that are going to get value from this podcast. So without further ado, Jose, man, thank you for joining us today, my man. Greatly appreciate your time. No, thank you for having me, Jeffrey. You know, it's, it's super cool to connect with you again. And I know we've known each other for the last couple of years. I've seen a lot of your growth. Congratulations on everything. I know that you've uh, went from alarms to doing solar now. So much success. As a matter of fact, I, don't, I probably don't even have to wish you success because I see the success happening. So continued success in your business, bro. And, and, and I'm super excited to be here as well. Thank you, my man. And that it, it's all by associating myself with the right people, people like you watching you from afar taking your business to a whole nother level like you said we've known each other for a couple of years and let's jump right into it jose can you tell us a little bit about who you are and who was jose back in high school who was that young gentleman that that was in high school what did you do did were you into sports a little bit about your family's background wow you know asking me about my my school days i have to kind of rewind about 25 years ago you know uh had a pretty average life. I mean, grew up in the San Fernando Valley, Pacoima, San Fernando, Silmar to be exact. And, and uh, you know, did, didn't know, I didn't know what I didn't know back then. And I guess what I mean by that is we lived a very, you know, humble lifestyle. You know, we, we had to, you know, I, was, I, I remember telling my kids this story that, you know, in order for us to play the video game machines, we, we took nickels and we would pound them to the size of a quarter to make it, you know, the, the size of a quarter and we'd go play video games and, and we just had fun growing up. And, you know, we moved over uh, to Palmdale uh, when I was 15 years old, went to high school in Palmdale. Um, just like I said, just just pl played football, uh, played football for a couple of years, uh, had fun doing that. And, uh, you know, back then my 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 passion was you know, you're, you're going to trip out on this. I wanted to be an architect. You know, I'm an analytical really? by nature. I, that's my personality. I wanted to be an architect. So when it came down to graduating and, and, and taking that next step into going to school, um, I, I went for a very, literally for like a few weeks, I went to a school called Woodbury University in Burbank. And um, honestly, they made me hate architecture. Uh, I, I, I don't know why, but my 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 mindset shifted immediately from like wanting to do that so so badly in high school to I just needed to go make some money so I I, I switched my majors to business and then unfortunately because my my parents were splitting up at the time I, I couldn't afford to go to school anymore so I had to find a job so from working to you know your local hamburger spot to working at a movie theater um, I kind of held a bunch of you know, oddball jobs up until I was about 19 years old. And I, I literally started working at a factory in, uh, in Valencia. And uh, I would have never thought I would have ended up, you know, getting oily and, and, and smelling like, like burnt grease or whatever. Uh, but that I was, I was at that off. I'm sorry. I was at that company for roughly seven years. And I kind of uh, transitioned from being, you know, uh, working on machines to, working in customer service to working with the sales team. So like I, I always knew I had a, a, a an act for, for sales. Um, so, so no, cause numbers, you know, being analytical numbers just kind of were, were drawn to me naturally. Right. So, so I, I started in sales there and then from there it just kind of, you know, it, it just kind of blew up. That's, that's awesome, man. So from, from all the professions of sales, right. There's many different professions, life insurance, there's, car sales people, there's alarms, there's solar, there's all kinds of different different businesses. Why did you decide to jump into the real estate space and in, in, in that type of sales? What what attracted you and what drew you close to that? 
being 100% honest, the, the money drew me in first. That was the immediate attraction, right? Because I always wanted to find a way to make money. Um, I always, mm. and also I always loved being like my own boss. I didn't know what that meant at the time, right? Um, but, but being attracted to that, but even, even after kind of getting, getting to know the business and working with clients, I kind of quickly knew that it wasn't about the money. The, the money was the byproduct of building a relationship that I had with somebody and, and actually having a deep connection with a client, right? So I, I actually got a, a, uh, uh, an adrenaline rush from Kenyon Keys. So, so I remember having uh, um, written down on my notes, like, my goal is to hand out three keys to three buyers this month. And I would scratch one off and I'd say one down, one, you know, two to go or whatever the case was, right? That seemed the... The expression, seeing the the, the gratefulness um, of them entering like a brand new house as 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 I got you know early on in my career, that was that was super cool to me. So I just built off of that, and like I said, money money was the byproduct of me being able to service that. Right. So, so you started with money, right? But then the feeling just took you to a whole other level because now you saw how. You were able to help out some other, so many other people get into that dream home and then fighting to get that house. So you started with the money and then you transitioned into the feeling, which led you to a whole nother conviction. A hundred, a hundred percent. And you know, the funny, the funny thing is, 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 uh, you know, when I coach, you know, my members now, I, I ask everybody and even people that join my office, I go, what is your purpose in real estate? And, 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 uh, and that's why I, I was open and honest with you about the money because most of the answers that I get is money related. And I have to dig deeper because it's not money related as it wasn't money related for me. The true purpose is it could be, hey, I want to help my parents. You know, I'm, I'm 21, 22 years old. I, I, I want to help my parents. My, my, my mom and dad work, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. So I have to kind of ask those questions and dig that out of them and dig that emotion out of them because that's the real purpose, right? You know, and, and that purpose evolves with time from helping their parents to buying their first, you know, th themselves buying their own, their first house to them buying their first investment, you know, seeing things, you know, that's the true purpose. So I help them dig that out of themselves and then they, they leave and say, wow, now I know now I know my my purpose and in, in why I do this. Right. Absolutely, man. You got to attach that feeling to it because like you mentioned, if it's just the money, everybody will be successful right now if it, it, if it was just about the money, right? But let's face it, it's not. That could get you started, but something else is going to keep you moving right. forward in the times of challenges, right? Because I'm sure that it wasn't all rainbows at the beginning. I know that you had to encounter a lot of setbacks, a lot of failures, a lot of losses, well, can, can you touch on that? What were some of those setbacks and losses that you experienced throughout the process that people could, could relate to? Oh, man. Uh, you name it, I've been there. Lost money, lost time, lost friends, uh, relationships, uh, uh, you know, from, from not understanding, you know, phone calls and how phone calls are, make, uh, are made, uh, you know, getting hung up on, uh, getting told to F off. Um, getting spit on as I'm door knocking, getting chased by a dog. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> it sounds funny now because yeah, I'm thinking about uh, like everything that I've gone through. You know, even 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 the way I would market myself, right? It, you know, it, it early on in my career, I, I I just wanted to find a way to grab people's attention, and and even that 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 into some some sense was a failure because. You know, my marketing now or the way I promote myself now is completely different. But I look at that as a failure because it helped me. It forced me to change. It forced me to grow. It forced me to level up. And, and as my own business was growing, I knew that I had to change my branding uh, and how I presented myself out there to attract the clients that I wanted. So losses losses are inevitable losses are going to come losses are to be expected failures to be expected if you're not failing you're not growing uh and you really mm. you, the only failure you really taking is is when you stop trying that's when you re really fail absolutely you hit it right if you're not if you're not making mistakes in the process 
the mistakes are gonna allow you to grow, right? They're they're, they're gonna see it, it, it's a kind of, how do I explain this? It's an example of the opportunity of growth that you have, right? In the beginning. So what did you do throughout that process, Jose? Right? All those setbacks, getting spit, getting chased by the dog, right? Setbacks after setbacks, ca customers canceling on you. How did you keep that positive? attitude right and continue moving forward because a lot of people are going to go through that and i see this in sales especially in and in, and in when it comes to commissions right 1099 an independent contractor they they have the ability that now they have freedom of the time but at the same time that's a big mistake because a lot of people are not coachable they don't have a like system and they don't have the right mindset that when adversary hits them they stop and they get paralyzed what kept you going what kept me going was I guess my own, my own competitiveness with myself. I knew that I was meant for something better. I didn't know at the time what it was. And I know every single person listening to, to, to us right now, they're meant for something better. And they may or may not know what that is. I just kept, I just kept pushing myself to, to, until, I, you know, until I found it. You know, um, my gift now is being able to help others grow um, Physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally, because, you know, in, in, in my in the real estate industry, I, you know, I, I've you know, a lot of people have heard me say this, but real estate starts at home. So you have to, you know, mm. it, it's really your your keeping that end in mind. That's what kind of kept me going. That's what kept me going, you know, uh, 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 knowing that I was meant for more. And again, even when I didn't know what I was meant for, I just knew I knew I was destined to something and I, and, and I was determined even now, I know I'm still meant for more, right? I'm still digging. I'm still pushing. I'm still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I love, I love being the dumbest person in the room because that means I'm learning from other people and how they've grown their business, you know, to, to, to produce millions and, 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 and tens of millions. That's, 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 that's where I want to be. Right. So it, it's always constantly wanting to learn. That's what's kind of kept me going. Powerful, man. And keeping that end in mind, right? You said keeping that end in mind and real estate starts at home. Can you can you elaborate on that? You know, great question. And what, what I mean by that is, you know, there, there are priorities that we have to always be in alignment with. And, and, and I'm speaking about this because I have I have failed at this a few times. So, so I feel like I, I can speak about this. You know, I'm a big believer that the number one priority that you must have is with God or, or, or with the universe or, whom, or whatever that you believe in, right? Once that you're in, uh, in alignment there, the, the, you know, in receiving love there, the, the next priority should be yourself. You got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not being selfish. That's taking care of you, whether that's reading a book, uh, whether that's working out. Whether that's getting your nails done, pedicure, getting a haircut, uh, however you define self-love and self-care, that's got to happen because how can you take care of your spouse and your family if you don't love yourself? Because once you are, once once that tank is full, the the your, the natural spillage it's going to happen to your family, right? Mm. You're going to love on your spouse. You're going to love on your husband, your wife. You're going to love on your kids. And, and, and once their tank is full, right, once you're spending that quality time with them and showing them that you're there, guess what's going to naturally grow? The byproduct of having all that in alignment, your business is going to naturally grow. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me when. It's going to happen in, a, in, in, in an effortless way that you're going to be like, whoa, where'd that come from? But it's because you're in alignment. From, from, again, you know, having that relationship with God, having that relationship with yourself and having that self-love, having that love with your spouse and your family. Again, the, the natural uh, 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 flow that's going to happen by itself, again, is your business. Your business will flourish as a result of that. I can guarantee that. And I can guarantee that if you don't have that in alignment, you know, you're going you're gonna to struggle as I have. As I have, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've been business first and I was business first for a long time, right? During COVID, I, I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want the, I didn't want the office to fail. I didn't want any of my agents to fail, but that was being, having that business mind first. 
and, and I lost myself as a result of that, right? But once I got back and said, you know what? No, God first always. God first always. And I'm not preaching here, but again, what I'm preaching is that you have to have that alignment with with uh, with uh, with God, with with the universe, with whomever, right? Whatever you believe in, right? Taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, and then believe me, believe me when I say that your business will naturally flourish. That's powerful, man. Let's let, let's touch on uh, on that, Jose, because you talked about in COVID, like you had some challenges, right? And now it's not just you, right? Now it's not just you and your family. Now you have bigger responsibilities because you run a company, a successful company. How how did you stay on track and at the same time coach and mentor your company, your team members on to stay on track, right? Because now you have a bigger responsibility. And I think the bigger the growth, the bigger the commitment that you have to have, right? Because with great great responsibility, right? You gotta you gotta show up every single day. So what kept you showing up every single day? Not wanting to fail. First and foremost, just not wanting to fail. But that was my competitive side, right? But I, I, I got to say, you know, with not wanting to fail, it came at a cost. During COVID, that came at a cost. And that, that, that cost was spending less time here at home or spending less time with the family, right? Um, we didn't fail. Uh, but again, it, it, everything comes at a cost. Now, now, as we've all learned how to pivot and adjust, right? Because this is what it's all about. Business is all about pivoting and adjusting. Life is all about pivoting and adjusting, right? Right. You have to learn and track your numbers because the numbers will tell you a story. The numbers will tell you the truth always, right? The numbers will say, hey, you know what? Maybe my production's low or, or you know what? We're, we're, we're way above track. So you adjust your message as I've adjusted my message to, to the team based on where the numbers are. And I got to tell you right now, the, where we find ourselves right now in the current market conditions we're down as an office, as agents, we're all down, right? You feel the market pressures right now. Buyers can't get their offers accepted. Uh, um, sellers, you know, there's just not enough sellers out there, right? And as a result, the numbers are, are telling me how to, how to speak to my, to my agents and to my team, right? So, so track your numbers. And I think tracking your numbers, again, it'll tell you the story and it'll tell your coaches and your leaders the story as well on where you should uh where you should adjust that's so powerful right paying attention of everything that's happening around you right keep be keeping being aware of everything right when you talked about tracking your numbers seeing the pivot adjusting that's so that's so true because life in business is all about pivoting and adjusting like when i i, I when you met me i was in the alarm industry right i did that for eight years i thought that that was my identity and when COVID hit, I had to pivot and adjust fast right away. I couldn't sit down and complain and moan like, oh, look at me. This, why did this happen to me? Like I had to pivot and adjust because I have great responsibility with my family. So I, I, I get that 100%, man. So let's let's touch on this, uh, Jose, because I know that you're big on consistency. You're big on, on accountability. And I think for myself, one thing that has helped me in the last two years has been me surrounding myself with massive accountability, putting my ass on the fire, right? And making sure that I have people that are counting on me, right? Because I know I'm a creature of habit and I have bad habits. I have bad habits and that accountability has helped me eliminate a lot of those bad habits. Can you touch on that? How important? Because I know that you guys have accountability in your company and what type of accountability do you guys have right now? Well, I have accountability partners in, in you know, depending on, on, you know, uh, what segment of my life, right? Uh, to touch on, on the office, I, I have several mastermind groups that I meet with on a weekly basis. And I ask them, what are you doing today that's going to get you one step closer to your goal, right? A lot of people don't like accountability because it's exposing their toxic behavior, Right. If, 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 if you really mm -hmm. look at the word accountability, it's 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 exposing the toxic behavior that, you know, you got to change, but you don't do it because you're in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state of comfort. So so my accountability groups and my mastermind sessions are are simple to the to the to the point where, hey, if you're not showing up, that already is telling me something that are, that's telling me that your schedule is off. And if you're treating a mastermind session or an accountability group like this, 
How are you treating the clients in your business? So it's a direct reflection. Mm. How you show up to a mastermind, how you show up to an accountability session is a direct reflection of how you show up out there to your clients. Oh, powerful. Exactly. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So if you're showing up unprepared to a mastermind, not putting in your work, you're going to show up like that to your clients as well and to your family and to life, right? Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah, so we, so we let's go over numbers. We go over intentions. We go over you know, uh, 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 a couple of key points that just keeps everyone in tune and, and keeps everyone consistent. The consistency is the key to everything, right? It's the law of averages. The more that you do something, something's going to happen, right? So I just make sure that they're staying the course, staying true and authentic to the, to the goal that they set for themselves. I didn't set the goal for them you know they did they're responsible for that but i'm i'm the i'm the i'm the reminder hey remember this let's let's go let's stay consistent so how do you do that jose because i know you transitioned from being just a realtor right operating by yourself to now running a bit a, a company and, and managing a lot of agents how, how was that transition? Because a lot of people could be in that same shoes that they're probably thinking about, man, I want to grow a team. I want to expand. What are the what are the steps that you did in the beginning to get you to that position? How did you position yourself to, to do that? Well, number one, I had to really dial down my systems, my prospecting system, a system of how I handled my clients, because that's duplicatable. So once I perfected my systems and established what I call my plays, you know, I knew that if I wanted to run a successful organization, I can't do it alone. So I had to hire key people in place to do the activities that I no longer was able to do. I, I, and I refer to those as income servicing activities. I was better suited that I, to only handle income generating activities. That was my strong suit. Prospecting, negotiating contracts, recruiting, right? Those are all income generating activities. You know, answering emails, uh, making an appointment, showing property, those are income servicing activities for me at the time. So I needed to hire people. And that was the investment that I made was that I hired key people in the right areas that allowed me to scale, that basically bought my time back. I had to buy my time back because I no longer had time to deal with certain certain things or certain activities. So first and foremost mm -hmm. is that uh, we have to we have to, you know, make your first hire, you know, and for a lot of people, it's 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 that assistant. It's that assistant and, and, and a lot of people don't do that because of the fear or the fear of having the responsibility that now you have someone, someone's salary to pay for. I, I have to tell everybody, I have to mm -hmm. remind people that having, having pressure is a privilege. That, that's a privilege because pressure makes you perform. Having the pressure of me mm -hmm. knowing that I had to pay my assistant X amount of dollars every single month, every single year, that that caused me to perform. You know, that was that was a way for me to perform. I, I, hey, you know what? This person is counting on me. Their family is now counting on me that I do my job so that they can do their job and that I can continue to bless them. You know what I mean? Now I, I have two assistants and I'm like, man, I'm ready for my third one because, you know, because you got to continue to scale. You know what I mean? So right. get your assistant number one, you know, and, and I'm going to say something that's really a close, a close first or tight for first is that with that is that you have to hire a coach. I've always had a coach in my business, whether it's for, for nutrition, right? You and I had the same coach for nutrition for quite some time, right? Uh, whether right. it's a business coach, a real estate coach, you know, you, I have, I have multiple coaches depending on what area in my life I'm trying to improve because I know I'm not the best at that. So I need to, if I want to get there and I want to get there fast, I'm going to hire someone that's going to get me there the fastest. And again, I don't look at that. As, I don't look at that as a cost. I look at that as an investment and what it's costing me not to have that. Mm, that's powerful right there. Cause a lot of people look at it. It's like, man, uh, it's an expense. Like, ah, uh, I got to pay a thousand dollars a month for a coaching, right? It's an expense rather than seeing it, man, it's an investment that you're doing to yourself and now to your team, right? 
because not only are you benefiting from it, your team now gets to benefit from it because they're learning from you. They're following suit. So I know that you have a lot of successful uh, realtors right now in, in, in your organization. Arvin, Maria, I've worked with Maria. Arvin works with one of our, our, our team members uh, in our company, Matthew. So how has that been, right? Because me personally, Jose, like I get a kick of see, seeing our team succeed, right? When I see that they just helped out a family, save money on, the, on, a, on their electricity, and I see the their transition and their growth in the process, that fires me up, man. And that keeps me like, man, I got to get better, right? So how has that been with you? Because I know that you've been doing this for a long time, longer than me. Like, I just started building a team not so long ago. So how has that been and what have you learned in the process? You know, I've learned that if I take myself out of the equation and don't focus on myself and focus on someone else's growth, the byproduct of me winning is, is automatic. You know, you mentioned Arvin, you mentioned Maria, you know, there's a bunch of others. I can, I can say, you know, there's a, there's a young lady named Maritza Perez. There's, there's, there's another young man named Giovanni uh, Paredes that actually works with Arvin. Seeing firsthand me being able to, me, me having the privilege, right, to be able to be a part of their journey in this business, mm -hmm. that's super cool. And I, I enjoy it. I, you know, a lot of these people that you mentioned, they came to me brand new, you know, as, as they say, wet behind the ears. Um, my office was the first office that they'd been in. So I've seen them start at absolutely zero. And to see them scale to, to again, I'll, I'll mention Arvin because you, you, you talked about him. Arvin came and, and, and granted, he came from a different brokerage, but he came working from a team, right? Uh, he was able to build himself up. Um, now that mm -hmm. I, I don't, I mean, I can talk so many great things about him because he has a team. Um, they're, they're way into the six figures. Um, I know himself, he probably works four days a week, um, has a baby, spends a, a ton of time at home, um, has been able to to buy investments in the form of rentals, uh, has now been able to scale that into Airbnbs. Seeing all that from zero, man, that's 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 almost seen like my my. It's almost seen like I'm having another another child. You know what I mean? As, 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 again, God gave me the privilege to be a father to two beautiful, you know, kids of mine. You know, seeing. You know how they've grown it, it's almost it's very similar to seeing these agents blossom as well absolutely man and that that's a beautiful feeling and knowing that you had some part of it even though they had to do the work right they had to go out there and put in the work like you set the blueprint but it, it was still up to them to go out there and perform but a lot of people get stuck in that process right a hundred percent yeah I mean, it's up to them it's up to them all Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's touch on, on your coaching program, right? Why did you decide to start a coaching program? I know, I know that you have a company, a successful brokerage of real estate. What made you go into the coaching? Cause there's a lot of coaches right now in the industry and what separates you from everybody else? What is that niche that you're, that you're working on? Um, uh, you know, I, I think I heard two questions in that in that statement. So, you know, why did I get in into coaching is because I have a genuine. How do I say this? I am genuinely I genuinely love being a part of someone's development, you know, from being a brand new realtor, getting started and closing their first deal to helping them get to 30 from seeing someone that's at 30 deals, 40 deals and, and needing to scale out and build a team from, you know, from seeing someone, cause I coach an individual right now that owns a brokerage up North from seeing how, how much growth his office has had that to me, that that's, that's my passion. And I, and I hate to sound so cliche and use the word passion, but I genuinely love it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm able to have conversations uh, with my members very similar to this where, you know, where they're one-on-one -on -one sessions, they're, they're one-on-one. -on -one. I'm able to be, you know, vulnerable with them and they're able to be vulnerable with me. And as a result of them being vulnerable, I'm able to help them 
again, make that slight adjustment because it only takes a little bit of an adjustment to start seeing a big result. And I'm able to capture that and they're able to have those open conversations with me on a one-on-one -on -one fashion, right? So I got, I got into it because I, I know, I know, you know, I know what I'm destined for. I know why God put me on this planet and it's to help people, you know, grow, like I mentioned before, um, physically with, with their, with their own health, right? Uh, uh, emotionally, uh, spiritually, uh, uh, in their business. Heck, I'll even say at home. And, and I can say all that because I've experienced all that. I've, 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 I've been, I've been in the low, right? I've, I've, I've been down there where they, where they may currently find themselves in now. I've been at the high, right? I've, 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 I've lost money. I, I've lost a lot of time. I, I've lost friends, you know, as a result of me trying to, you know, develop myself to be a better person, right? So, so this, this coaching program, which I think everyone needs, is a way for them to really kind of dig down into what they really want. And, and me helping them get to where they really want in the shortest amount of time possible. And again, being able to scale out, being able to work less and earn more. These are all concepts and, and, and mindsets that, that, that I've learned. I'm 43 years old and I didn't get my first coaches until I was probably about in my mid thirties. If I would have known and really understood the power of having a coach earlier on in my career, you know, I, I could say that I could have been in a much better place now, but you know, my timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. I'm here now because I'm able to help many others now. Absolutely, the timing is always right, right? Uh, how do you how how do you like? Let's just say I come and I coach with you, right, Jose? I, I've been in the in the real estate industry. What are the first things that you'll look at when when I sit down with you? What is that process? Do you look at my habits? Do you look at my calendar? Do you look at how coachable am I? Because I know coachability has a lot to do with it, right? You have to have somebody that is coachable. And especially when you're coaching somebody, the ego could get in the way, right? I remember when I was coaching, uh, we had the same coach for our, fit for our fitness. Multiple times, man, like I, it got to, it got to the point that I, my ego was getting in the way. I'm like, dude, I'm paying you and you're freaking right here drilling me and freaking talking crap to me. But I needed to humble myself down and hear that, like, you know what? This guy is right because he's giving me the blueprint. This guy is giving me the blueprint. I need to humble down and I, he's the expert I got to listen to. So what do you look at, right? Because I, that's... You know, great question. And, and the reason I got excited when you said that is because it's so true. You know, the ego gets in the way of everything. The ego gets in the way of even looking at a coaching program, to be quite honest, because they're like, ah, eh, I, I can get it anywhere, right? Uh, or, or what makes you different than than these guys over here, right? The ego, you know, the ego is is a son of a, you know what? Um, it's gotten the best out of me. Uh, it, it's gotten the best out of you, like you've said. I've questioned my coaches, but they, like I said, like at the end of the day, I have to remind myself, why did I hire you in the first place? I hired you in the first place because where I was at that time was I was humble enough at that time to say I need help, mm -hmm. and and I think mm -hmm. I think the word help has really been uh, um, stigmatized where it's a, it's weakness, right? So as a form of weakness, mm -hmm. a, a lot of us don't ask for help, right? I hate to even say this that in our culture, right? In our culture, we don't ask for help. In our culture, we don't do certain things because it's not it's not it's not what a guy does. It's not what a man does, right? That's the ego, right? So, so I, I ask a ton of questions. So if, if you and I were coaching, I would just ask you a lot of questions to really dig, de uh, dig deep into what you really want to accomplish. Again, the steps and the systems of processes that, that, you, that you have in place, or quite frankly, maybe you don't have in place, and start at square one. I've been, I, I'm happy to say that I've had one coach in my real estate business. I've had her for seven years. I've been with my coach for seven years. She has started with me since wow. I was an agent and she is still with me to this day as a broker owner and as me, obviously, you know, building out my coaching program. And, and she, she knows my wife. She knows my kids. She knows everything about me. And as a result of having those vulnerable conversations with me, she'll tell me, Jose, 
get off your ass and start working. Remember what you told me? And so, so even I, right, I need those gentle reminders, even though they're not so gentle sometimes, but we all, we all need to hear the truth. And I think we're afraid to hear the truth. And I think that's why people stay away from coaching is because we're afraid to get the truth. 100%. Yeah. The, the truth will get you uncomfortable because there'll be a reflection of what you're not doing. Right. You say you were going to do this. Mm -hmm. yet You're not doing it. You committed to it. You committed with part of the coaching. And it, it's, it's 100 percent because I, even to this point, like I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be vulnerable right here with my fitness the last year. Like I've paid Elias the whole freaking year and I have not done anything that he's telling me to do. And but I keep paying because it's a reminder. Like, dude, you need to get you need to get back on it. Right. I committed. And yesterday, a couple of days, he messaged me. He's like, dude, did you quit? And I'm like, that just freaking pissed me off. I'm like, no, I, I'm not a quitter, man. And I, it, but it's a, it's again, I have to be willing to do the work, right? Because am I capable? Yeah. Everybody's capable of going to the gym and working out at least 45 minutes a day and eating right, right? But now am I going to be willing to put in the work, right? Am I going to be willing to put that hamburger down and pick up my meal, the meal that they pretty much told me to eat, right? And and I think with coaching sometimes, like, especially especially at a 1099, right? Because you feel like you're investing, you're paying for that. And sooner or later, you start seeing it as an expense because you're not doing the work, right? Instead of looking at it from an investment standpoint, like, man, this is going to get me to a whole nother level. So with that said, how uh, what are type of programs that you have? Is it just one one on ones, or is it in a group setting that you do your coaching? And what do you? What is a good candidate for you for for your coaching program? You know, I, I have I have great question, uh, Jeffrey. I have three three different programs that I offer. Again, they're all one one on one sessions. Um, as we scale out, I have other coaches that are that are that are ready to you know service. All of the clients, right, and all of the coaches that that are on 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 the team have been hand selected by me because number one, they've been there with me, they, and they they themselves have started from absolutely nothing and have grown an amazing business for themselves. And again, at some of them at, at really a young age, and even and even that's an ego thing because you know when, when, one of my coaches was, you know, when I was I think I just turned forty, one of my coaches was twenty eight. And I was like, wait a second, this young guy is going to teach me how to do something in, in, in business and in life. So I, again, I had to humble myself down, right? And say, well, this, this, you know, this kid, he's making 10 times more than you. So he's got to be doing something right. So you have to listen. Mm. So everyone in my, in my, in my team has been hand selected uh, and paired up with the individuals, again, to get them to get the results as quickly as possible. The three programs that I have are uh, for, for real estate agents, so direct real estate agents, and again, all one-on-one -on -one sessions, okay? Uh, the, second, the second program that I offer is for uh, uh, people that want to build a team or already have a team and, and they want to really dial down the systems, really dial down uh, the role that each individual plays on that team, so that everyone can work in in sync, and and obviously get to the you know get to the the, the goal a lot faster. And then third is my is uh, is programs for broker owners. Uh, I've had the privilege of starting an office from absolutely zero. Uh, I know what metrics to look at. Again, I'm happy to say that my office is 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 70 agents plus, uh, 6,000 square foot office. Uh, we do over $5 million in revenue annually in the city of Palmdale, uh, where the price points, you know, are around 400,000, you know, 400, 450. Um, I know what areas to look at when brokers or owners, you know, need to adjust. I need, I know the recruiting uh, skill set that they need to build in order to continue to bring more bodies into the, into their office. I know the culture that they need to build. Uh, for them to have a successful office. So those are the three types of programs that I offer. Love it. You have it for a beginner, somebody that already has skin in the game, and then somebody that now is building an organization for 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 their family's trajectory, right? Because this is this is longevity. So 
A few, uh, a few, a few more questions, Jose. Man, thank you so much. By the way, I, I, I've had a good time right now, I'm learning a lot from you. I've taken a lot of notes. You, you're doing something right over there, and your energy is just amazing, man. So, I, I'm inspired by it, and I, I, I again, I want to surround myself with the right people. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast because you are an example of like what's possible right you just mentioned you started a brokerage in palmdale right with literally nothing and now you guys are doing over five million in revenue that's outstanding man a lot of people are not willing to go through those failures and those setbacks that you talked about right you didn't stop because you had that vision you had that end game and i'm and i'm sure that you're nowhere near where you want to be yet right because you're always evolving you're always getting to that next level right so with that said let's let's get into let's get into something different right what is your favorite music man what do you like listening to because i see on your instagram and you're constantly posting elvis <laughs> stuff like that so what is that music that you like bumping what you know, fires jose man. up man honestly i i uh i love all kinds of music i you know i have you know, Elvis Presley is my is my guy. I mean, if for those that really know me, uh, my office is filled with a, with with a lot of Elvis memorabilia. I just I, you know, his music. You know, and people ask me why do you like Elvis Presley so much? I, you know, his humble beginnings to to what he was able to do. Honestly, you know, if you really know the story of Elvis, he was a very loving and a very giving person. I mean, there's stories of him. You know, when he was you know being getting successful. Uh, he bought cars for people that couldn't buy cars for themselves. That, that to me is like, I can't wait to do that. I would love to, to go to, you know, a grocery store or, or a parking lot or a, sorry, a car dealership and just say, Hey, you know, quit window shopping, you know, go buy, go get that car. It's on me. I would love that. And that's, that's that, that, you know, so that's, that's, that's why I, I, I admire him so much. Right. But as 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 as, as, uh, as music goes, I listen to everything: Elvis Presley, hip hop, um, you know, metal, metal. When I'm out there working out, right? Uh, Deep house. I mean, I'm I'm 43 years old, my man. I I love 90s Deep House music. Uh, I grew up in the 90s. I went to high school in in the late 90s. So that was that's me, right? I love classical music. It 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 allows me to chill. Uh, it allows me to kind of uh, um, you know just kind of almost in a way like meditate, right? And just kind of bring bring me down because I, I need I need music and I need that energy to kind of get me going in the morning. But then at the same token, I need something soothing like classical music or or even like ocean sounds and nature sounds that kind of again bring me back into into peace. Right. So I just use music as a as a way of of, of energy because you know energy is everything. Energy creates emotion. You know what I mean? So so when I'm getting ready to work out, I'm listening to, uh, uh, you know, energetic music. You know, if I, I need to go to sleep, I'm listening to music that kind of calm me down. You know, in the car, in the car, I don't listen to music. In the car, I listen to, you know, podcast. You know, I listen mm -hmm. to things that are going to feed my mind because, again, it's it's where I'm going. Is, is That's the type of energy that I need to have based on where I'm going. I love that, man. Yeah, music is so powerful. That's one of the reasons why I asked because... You need you like you mentioned. You talked about what's the music that's gonna get you going at the gym, metal music. But then at the same time, you need music that is gonna ground you and get you back, back into place, right? Getting that breathing, that a, a, everything back into an into alignment. So that's powerful, man. Because I love music, man. I'm the same way. Like I listen at my car, podcast, bunch of podcasts, or listening to auto books. And when I'm listen, when I'm at the gym, I, I I gotta get that music that is just gonna get me on on a crazy mode that is just killing the weights, right? So I, I love that. What's your favorite food, Jose? Ah, uh, man, again, I don't discriminate against food, you know, but I got I got to keep it real. Okay. I love Mexican food. That is my go-to. That's my go-to, you know, from, from chile rellenos to carne asada to, to chicharrón, bro. I am all over it. <laughs> okay. right, man. Uh, I love Mexican food. I'm married to a Mexican. My wife is Mexican. She cooks all... Uh, all the Mexican food, and I love it, man. So I'm with you on that. <laughs> so I know that. Uh, sure. just, yeah, let's move into 
now what are you doing? Because now you're you have success, right? You're getting you're you're making good money, right? Where are you parking that money, right? And what would you recommend to people that have excess of money right now? What should they do? Should they throw it back into the business, the business that they're operating, whether it's real estate, whether it's solar, whether it is an alarm company, right? Or should they start buying real estate assets? Or how are you making your money grow and give you more return? Great question. And I think a lot has to do with where that individual finds them, find them, finds themselves at the moment. And what I mean by that is if you're, if you're starting your business and you want to, you know, get to, you know, this goal, then I would say you have to invest in your business, get your, get yourself a coach, right? You know, uh, get on, get on Jeffrey's team because he's going to get you, he's going to help you understand the business, right? Um, next after that, Again, once you have an excess of, of, of capital, what I've learned recently is that having that money in the bank isn't going to do you any good. So pick something. There's all sorts of ways to make money right now. There's, there's real estate. Uh, and even real estate can be ambiguous because you have rental properties, you have wholesaling, you have flipping, you have Airbnbs, you have a lot of things, right? There's cryptocurrency, right? Even though that's volatile, it, it's something that a lot of people are taking a look at, right? So there's 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 different ways. The only, the, the best advice that I can give someone is, don't don't keep that money in the bank. Put it to work for you. Pick your your uh, um, your niche or or select something that you feel that you're good at, and, and study that. Be good at that. Invest in that and make a ton of money with that. And then you can kind of go into the next project. One thing that I've seen a lot is that I, 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 even people ask me a lot, hey, what if I do this? And what if I do that? What if I do this? Well, if you're chasing a bunch of rabbits, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna catch any one of them. You gotta focus on one thing, mm -hmm. get good at that one thing, master that one thing, make money at that one thing, and then go on to the next project. Oh, man, you're preaching to the choir, Jose, because I was that person. <laughs> I was that person that was chasing a bunch of rabbits. Like you mentioned wholesaling, you mentioned um, Airbnb. I wanted to do Airbnb wholesaling. I wanted to get it, my real estate license. I wanted to continue doing alarms. I wanted to do life insurance. And at the same time, I was doing nothing. <laughs> and I felt miserable yeah. because my my... My energy was all over the place that it wasn't channeled, right? It was being distributed in many different areas. And at the same time, it, all the areas were half-assed. They were mediocre. So it's huge what you touched on right there, focusing on one thing, one thing only, mastering that, and then leveraging that time and money for you, right? Exactly. Awesome, Jose. Any, any last words, my man, before we get out of here? They, one last thing that you, you could share with the audience, if you could start all over, what, what would you do different, right? If I can go back, you know, in time, I think I would say just be true to yourself. Be your authentic you. People will like you. Uh, some people will love you. Other people will not like you. And other people will hate you. And, but that's okay because you're being you. Um, yeah. You know, I... I, I I've learned that love me or hate me, this is me. Love me or hate me, this right. is me. And I'm okay with that now. I used to want to be someone that I wasn't because I, I, that person was, 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 you know, was a mentor of mine. And I wanted to be like that person. And I emulated what that person did, but that wasn't me. I, I, I was trying to be someone that I wasn't. And as a result of that, again, I've lo I lost time. Right? I lost time because mm -hmm. I wasn't being me. So the best advice that I can give anyone that's listening is be you, be true to you, um, irregardless of what that means, irregardless if you lose friendships or relationships as a result of that, you are being you, you are special and unique your own way. God built you that way for a purpose and embrace that purpose. Embrace it, cherish it because you're special. 100% absolutely man you got to love yourself you got to you got to appreciate the the gifts that you were giving and we all have our own gifts in a uniquely way uh one last thing uh Jose before you get out 
I know that uh, you you're looking for people in your in Palmdale. If they want to if they want to look for you, wh where can they find you? How can they get a hold of you? If they're looking to transition to a different brokerage, how can they get a hold of you, my man? Thank you for asking. Great question. Uh, quickest way is to text me or call me directly. My number is six six one eight seven eight two six zero two. If if you want to you know join the brokerage. I'd uh, love to set up a time to meet up with you. If you want to join uh, uh, coaching, uh, they can email uh, uh, my staff at info at josesavalza.com. Uh, or you can send me a direct message through Instagram. My handle is at josesavalza1. Um, I'm readily available. Uh, again, I say this with all sincereness and genuinity. I, I just love, I, I, I love helping people. And if I can help you, even guide you the right way, even if it's not my office, to be quite frank. But if I can guide you the right way, then I, I know that I played a little bit of a role in helping you grow. Um, and, if, and, and if coaching is what you need, uh, my team and I are here to help you grow. Again, we're, we're going to help expose your own potential. You are limiting yourself for whatever reason. It could be because of how we were raised or the circumstances that we found ourselves in. But my team and I are there to help you, you know, push through that limitation. And, and again, just take you to where levels where, where you maybe have thought of, but thought it was a little bit too much. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. And at, again, people, if you guys are in Palmdale, in the Palmdale area nearby, make sure that you guys connect with Jose, because again, if you want to be around around the right proximity, the right people that are going to help you, and they're like he said, they're going to expose the, the good, the bad, but more importantly, the ugly things that are going around you, so like that, you could get to a whole nother level faster, because it's all about speed, right? You could either hop on a uh, on a Prius, right? I'll go get you. I'll get you to the to your destination, or you could hop on a plane that will get you there faster. It's your choice. At exactly. the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. But again, if you want to grow and and if you feel like he mentioned, like there's so so much more within you, you got to be around the right proximity that and the right people that are gonna bring that greatness out of you, right? Jose, thank you for for your time, my man. Thank you for taking the time today out of your busy schedule to come out here in our podcast. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by UYS Energy, right? It's a solar company that specializes in teaching families on how to go solar the right way. So in our company, our mission is to expose, again, the good, the bad, but more importantly, the ugly side of solar because there's a lot of negativity when it comes to solar. So you want to make sure that you're working with a professional, but more importantly, with a company that is going to look out for your best interest because this is an important investment that you're going to do for your family. So you want to make sure that you're working with the right company, right? So we're going to make sure that we put Jose's information on the... On the video, make sure that you guys reach out to them. If you feel that you got value from this podcast, please make sure that you guys share this to a lot of people because more people need to hear this, right? There's a lot of information out there. And again, you got to be exposed to this information. And sooner or later, there's going to be one thing that someone is going to say that is going to spark, that is going to give you hope, that is going to that is going to get your juices going. You just need that one thing. And this this podcast could give you that one thing. So with that said, Jose, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule, my man. Appreciate you. Looking forward to getting growing with you and seeing your, your, your transformation in years to come, my man. Appreciate you. Likewise, my man. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's a, pre a, pre a pleasure and a, and a privilege as always. I'll see you soon, brother. Thanks again.